So when I say two to five seconds, I mean radically stop all the imaginal activities for two to five seconds. If you do that genuinely, you only have to do it two to five times an hour for the rest of your life. That's a very small fraction that's required to exit the gravitational force of Maya. Maya is very kind, it's very generous. Of course it needs to be convincing, otherwise it wouldn't serve its purpose. So we can't blame Maya for being so darn convincing. If anything, we should lightly, gently spank ourselves for not spending four to ten seconds an hour stopping all the imaginal activities and recognizing the divine essence of I am. Because that's all it takes. Let's take a deep breath. And relax. Take another deep breath. And relax. Take another energizing, empowering breath. And relax. Two to five seconds, two to five times per hour for the rest of your life. That's really it. Nothing else to tell you. Everything else I've ever said is just because you don't fucking do that. It's so powerful when you do it frequently. If you set aside an hour, not, not even set it aside, that's the wrong term. You just live your life, you don't set anything aside, but you overcommit to something for one hour. You overcommit to two to five seconds. So you do two to five seconds, two to five times per minute, just for one hour, once a week. And then the rest of the week, you do two to five seconds, two to five times an hour. But to have that intensity, it's like chopping wood, it's like chopping down a tree. Just get it done. Like don't let it regrow every day. Just get it done. Chop, pause, pull back, swing, chop, pause, pull back, swing, chop, pause. Just keep going. The tree will come down. The illusion will come down. But if you just do one or two chops and then you get distracted, Someone offers you a cup of coffee or you see a squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> and then you come back to it two weeks later, it's like regrown and then some. So you just commit for an hour a week to chopping wood. I'm not even going to ask you to carry water. Like that'd be cruel. Just chop the wood just for an hour, and then get it done. But even two to five times per hour, a two to five second window is pretty much frequent enough where every occurrence is close enough in proximity of space-time attention def deficit disorder, as we all suffer from. There's enough of a carryover in that to generate a compounding effect. A lot of these practices, they really only benefit you in a permanent sense 
if you compound them. You know, and for those who are maybe into the investing world, or a stock market, or even a crypto market, um, or anything really of that nature of compounding interest and so forth, you'll see it's the consistency and it's the compounding that really adds up, that really creates that freedom of being over the hump in some way, shape, or form. Whereas if you just, every once in a while, invest yourself in whatever it is, whether financially or spiritual practice, there's not enough carryover, there's not enough, there's too much space between the investments to really compound. And then there's a lot of loss usually in between these investments, in between these moments of recognition. And then usually people get a little bored with these kinds of practices because, oh, why would I do it again? I've already been doing it for two years. Well, not really been doing it for two years, but I've been, you know, once a week I've remembered to do two to five seconds. And so after two years, I feel like I'm not really cutting any new ground with that particular practice. So I would rather ask for a question about how to change this in my life or this or that. And that's all fine and good. But what's lacking is the compounding effect that you generate with a high frequency investment in spiritual practice. And you will start to see this with as little as two to five seconds, two to five times an hour. There's enough carryover power in that, the proximity of these moments of recognition, of these moments of exiting the matrix for just two to five seconds, the proximity of that in that formula is close enough to one another to build upon the previous attempt. And it's like digging a well for water instead of digging a thousand wells of one or two scoops. You just dig one well of a thousand scoops or 2,000 scoops. And then you will reach the well, you will reach the water. And that's not going to be lost on you. That's going to stay there. But these other little puddles, they're just going to disappear. You won't see them back. You won't even know where you cut previously. You got to learn the same teaching all over again, have the same insight all over again, go through the same forgetting process and seeking process, frustration process, and ultimate eureka, aha moment process. And then you're inspired, but then the frequency doesn't carry you over. It doesn't anchor it in. It doesn't settle in the roots of the tree of mind, as Ra would say. So either take it intensely into the depths, into the silence of your heart, or do it very frequently. Either very intensely, somewhat sporadically, but then it's got to be really intense, meaning intensely quiet, intensely desires, intensely focused, at the exclusion of all else. If you do that once a week, it would be as effective, roughly, approximately, as it would be if you do two to five seconds, easy, easy, easy peasy, casual moment of no thought, two to five seconds, two to five times an hour for that week, it would have a similar effect as a two hour, super intense, at the exclusion of all else, focus on silent presence. And of course you can combine them too. I mean, why not if this is what you want, right? If this is what we want, then we would combine it. And find something that works for the way that you distract yourself usually. Like, don't try to fight that too much. Over time, learn to control it more, learn to direct it more. But just kind of roll with the handicaps that you've got. Meaning, if you know that you're going to be distracted and super busy during the day, then make it a habit to every morning when you wake up for 10 or 15 minutes, tune in and every day before you go to bed for 10 to 15 minutes when you're in bed. That's fine if that's the strategy that works for you. In fact, I recommend that architecture for everybody. The waking up and the before you go to sleep are sort of very crucial times. And they can have a profound impact on your practice, on your realization, your stability, your freedom, the consistency, the compounding effect of it all, the lasting effects of it all. So upon waking up and before you go to sleep, I would say practice 10, 15 minutes or however long you want until you fall asleep, for instance, or until you feel energized and clear in the morning, till you feel like you are back in control of your own consciousness. 
And it's not just some random thought that you woke up with because of a dream or because of something yesterday or because something on your to-do list, but you are in charge of your own presence where you feel present to your own presence. That's what clarity is. I am that I am. I am conscious of the fact that I exist and therefore I'm in charge. I'm the governor of my world. I'm the governor of my body, of my mind, of my world. I am that I am. I am that I am. When you feel you're back in charge of yourself, not conceptually, but actually just that clear feeling of presence, soul contact, God contact, then you get up and you'll naturally get up because you'll get inspired in some way, shape, or form. You'll feel an inspiration to move, to just be, to share, to be with people or to do something, or have a coffee and continue your, to, your tune in with yourself maybe, or go to work, whatever you do and share the joy there. But clear yourself of all the dream stuff when you wake up so that you're back to clear, present here and now. That was that, this is now. And you do the same thing before you go to bed. Let the dream stuff of the day go till you're clear and you fall asleep. And then throughout the day, two to five seconds, two to five times an hour. And if you're really diehard, you can do once a week or more often, as you wish, a two hour segment where you're at the exclusion of everything else, you conjure up a desire to go deeper, to see yourself clearer than you've ever seen yourself before. And let that be the declaration of your meditation. To see yourself more clearly, to know thyself more clearly, more cleanly, more purely, more free of any distraction, attribute, quality, as you've ever seen yourself before. And then you sit with that and only that. And then you sit with that and only that. And then you sit with that and only that at the exclusion of all else. If you combine those three, the diehard two to three hour at the exclusion of all else once a week, two to five seconds, two to five times per hour for the rest of your life. And the 10 minutes or so upon waking up and before you fall asleep, then you're golden. And you can work that pretty much around your handicaps your distractions, your distortions, your tendencies, your habits. That kind of architecture doesn't have to get into the, in the way of what you're used to. It doesn't have to start fighting your existing patterns. It can just kind of navigate around it, but leave a profound impact. Nonetheless. And then slowly, slowly, for the most part, the state will shift of where your identity is naturally placed. So right now, maybe, maybe not for some of you, but for the most part, probably to some degree still, the idea is in your own mind, in your own sense perception, that you are the person, that you are the body walking around the world, and that you as that person are sometimes pausing your interaction with that world and are recognizing presence, consciousness, awareness, I am that I am as sort of a background. So if this uh, mural behind me, for instance, represents awareness, the background behind me, and then my here character, this guy with a hat and a cigar and clothes on, thank God, is in front of that background, then the experience is, for most people, that if they start doing spiritual practices, like I just suggested, is that I over here are gonna pause my activity over here for a second to just kind of recognize and sense and remember this background. But in truth, that very awareness, which is looking through the eyes of this character is that background, same essence, it's that force, that energy, it's that sentience. So in truth, the background is just remembering itself from the illusory point of view of the character perspective, the bodily perspective. So, but what happens, it's kind of like this torus from the back through the eyes back onto itself. But what happens when we do that plenty and we compound that by doing it frequently enough to where the distance between one gap and the other gap in the matrix isn't too big, to fill back up with stuff. But we keep digging a little bit more. We keep digging at a higher pace 
and that the illusion can keep up with us awakening. Because it's kind of a, a race between how fast you wake up, how fast you accelerate versus how fast the illusion sucks you in. Does that make sense? So not to stress you out or anything, you don't have to be adrenalized all day long to recognize or anything. But it is a little bit like a race of momentum. And it's not that hard to break that spell. It's, it's like a rocket escaping the gravitational field of planet Earth. It's going to take some effort at first. But then as the atmosphere gets lighter and gravity becomes less intense because of the distance of the object that's radiating its own locational frequency, which is rubbing off on the frequency locational variable of the object, which in this case is the rocket, therefore there's less of what we call gravity. At some point, it's going to be experienced like there is no gravity. You're just in the space. Before that, you were trying to get to space. The character was trying to recognize space. Beyond the clouds, it must be so beautiful. Let me try to get beyond the clouds, beyond the atmosphere, beyond all the debris and the smog. And, and then you get there, and then you're there. It's the space is. And the clouds don't bother you anymore. They're not really there. Similarly, to break through into greater effortlessness, for your practice to become more and more automatic and natural, that state shift of identity shifting from the bodily sense, which is the illusion always trying to take over control. That's its nature. Its nature is to be convincing. And every moment you take a two to five seconds interrupting the matrix, interrupting your world consciousness and your body consciousness, just for two to five seconds, just pausing all the imagination. That's really what it is. Radically, and everything is imagination. Thinking, referencing, looking at objects, describing something, watching a movie, talking to a friend. You're all referencing it. It only appears to you because you're thinking about it. You're imagining it. Everything exists in your imagination only. You've never experienced the world without first imagining that object right there, without first referencing it in your imagination or mind. So that's the only place you actually know of a world is in whatever you're referencing right now whatever you're pointing to with the power of your mind, AKA whatever your imagination is going to. You can call it a physical world, but your imagination is going out to it first before you see the physical world. So literally everything exists as your imagination. It's the only thing we can say for sure. The rest is assumption that there's actually an object behind what I'm imagining is just an assumption. But what I can't say for sure is that I'm experiencing whatever I'm imagining. In other words, I'm experiencing whatever I'm placing my attention on, but that's imagination. So the structure behind that is that it's made to seem real and convincing. Now, if I take a break from that for two to five seconds, I just radically stop, I become so present that I stop imagining left, right, up, down, past, future, you, me. I just stop, just stop for two to five seconds. All the imagination ends. And there's just, I am. There's just presence, being. Just that, two to five seconds, two to five times an hour. Now, each such moment has its own momentum. It's like making an investment. And then now you've invested a portion of yourself in the stock market of awakening. You've invested yourself in awakening. But then you want to compound that. You want to take the benefit you get from that and reinvest it again in awakening. That's the other two to five seconds that you do a little bit later on. And then you want to take some of the profits up, you want to scrape some of that and put it back into the stock market of awakening. Now, at the same time, the illusion is always working against you because you're you're paying fees while you're investing. If you're not making any new moves, you're still paying fees. You're still using services. You're still, you know, your investment will over time drain out. You have to, you know, pay for your rent and all that stuff. So if you're not making more, then you're depleting over time, naturally by the nature of illusion. Then you're not going to exit the state of poverty. And in this case, spiritual poverty or awakening poverty. So there is the force of maya, if you will, the convincing nature of form and illusion, suggesting that it exists out there. And then there's your moments of awakening. Now you want to compound those moments as frequently as you can to maximize your benefit. 
to become spiritually abundant, awakening rich. Rich in awakening, awakeness. Rich in freedom, abundant in clarity. Wealthy in knowing God. So it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. I just told you it takes two to five seconds, two to five times an hour for the rest of your life. That's not a lot. So you see, the power of consciousness or self-awareness is much greater than the power of illusion or forgetfulness. Because even four to ten seconds out of every hour, and I'm not sure how many seconds there are in an hour, it's the top of my head, but that's, you know, that's a very small fraction that's required to exit the gravitational force of Maya. Maya is very kind, it's very generous. Of course it needs to be convincing, otherwise it wouldn't serve its purpose. So we can't blame Maya for being so darn convincing. If anything, we should lightly, gently spank ourselves for not spending four to 10 seconds an hour stopping all the imaginal activities and recognizing the divine essence of I am. Because that's all it takes. It's the minimum threshold to exit gravitational field of Maya. Now you could do it more often, of course. You could do it more frequently. And then you'd see, you'd see more gains. you get more spiritually abundant faster. It's really up to you. I'm just giving you sort of a minimum baseline to exit the gravitational forces of the illusion. And that's really all it takes. A genuine two to five second moment, two to five times an hour. So on the top end, that's 25 seconds an hour. And on the low end, that would be four seconds an hour. Either way, it's not much. So quite literally, if you spend 1% of your time not focused on the illusion, that's already enough to break free of it. Just 1%. So work on your architectures. Work on the intentionality of your day-to-day -day life. But you got to understand this does not work if you spend those two to five seconds, two to five times an hour on what you dreamed about last night or on this amazing blue light that you saw in the sky or this awesome state of uh, loving everybody. That might be the best one out of all of these, but or the least self-indulgent. It only works if you stop all imagination for two to five seconds, two to five times an hour. Because awakening is what you wake up to when you stop thinking, when you stop imagining a world, which includes a body and a mind and a personality that's in love with ETs or that's in love with blue lights in the sky, or that's in love with whatever you're in love with or fascinated by. There's this whole domain within the illusion called spirituality that has nothing to do with awakening. It's another convincing layer. So when I say two to five seconds, I mean radically stop all the imaginal activities for two to five seconds. If you do that, genuinely, you only have to do it two to five times an hour for the rest of your life. And that's plenty. Because in that moment, in that single moment, you will realize what you are. Or at least you'll give it the most amount of chance that it has. And then what happens, as I was getting to still, 
is that the background becomes itself again. It realizes that it's just the background looking through the eyes. So now when you practice or when you forget or when you're a little sloppy or when you are very concentrated or whatever your state might be on sort of this human interactional level, it's more and more like you're looking, you're the background looking at the character talking, speaking, rather than being the character having to stop talking or speaking in order to recognize the background. So you become more steady, more stable, like the background, like the mural, just gazing, looking, knowing, being. And then whatever you call practice or meditation becomes easier and easier and easier and easier and more and more obvious and more and more natural. And this helps shift your identity out of the body and into presence or awareness. <clears throat> 